Okay, just got home and we are now over 48 hours of runtime. Started off at 4,500 RPM. Now running slightly lower than this morning, but this seems to be going up, so it seems to vary a little. The amps, or the amp drawer, looks to be about 10 milliamp at the moment, from what I'm looking at. Uh, the battery voltage, whoops, seems pretty much unchanged. Maybe a little bit higher than what it was last night. So, my plan now, and it's one of the things Russ Grease also said on YouTube today, was uh, I've got let's see, six of these bad boys, 2.5 volts, 22 farads, they're not cheap. Uh, so there's some super caps, and I'm thinking about uh, putting them in series, so well, that would give me 15 volts, charging them up, and seeing how long we can run. Now previously, when I, I built this circuit, totally different rotor, totally different coil, I and I was just running it on a 1.5 volt battery, I got it to run off a 1 farad uh, 1.5 volt cap for about 11 minutes. So I'm hoping uh, this can totally obliterate that record, but the um, the interesting thing with it is that I found at that time that the batteries obviously recover and have a chemical reaction going on all the time, whereas your cap doesn't. So uh, you certainly lose that effect with a cap. So. But I'm curious to know how much of um, how much from the coil or the collapsing uh, the collapsing charge in the coil will actually go back into the cap. And because when you look at this on a scope, you see the nice sinusoidal waveform. If you put a scope across the uh, across the coil, you see the sinusoidal waveform from the spinning magnet creating the um, uh, that way for me you see the DC spikes uh, from the pulsing and uh, so that's the next job so 48 hours around 6300 RPM and really from what I can tell no loss in battery voltage uh, if anything it seems to be so I'm highly efficient but uh, off to uh, eliminate the battery as a factor and charge up some caps back soon.